to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Notifications, more of your presence, more of your presence, more of your glory. More of your presence, more of your glory, more love, more power, more of you in my life. That's my prayer, Lord. More love, more power. More of you, more of you in my life. Let it be your prayer. Sing more love, more love, more power. Shale baka tapanda geba la dusi ya tapala. She geba rada balaga tapanda babade. One more time. More love. the voices more love more power more of you in my life one more time mean it from the depth of your heart Go ahead and begin to bless him in the spirit. Do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the spirit. Be ye filled with the spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melodies in your heart unto the Lord. Someone is praying. Shalega de brande ge balaka tosia. Shadi barakos kati laka brande brande laka tosia da balatosia. More of your glory, more of your power. Shalega de prans kati laka tosha brande balatosia ta. That I become more like you. That I become more like you. That I become more like you in experience. That I become more like you. More like you, more like you, more like you. Oh, 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 oh. Sobrotos 
And when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Someone is still praying. This is part of koinonia. It is the koinonia experience. Your healing comes in the name of our God. Your breakthrough comes in the name of our God. Your growth comes in the name of our God Shalabakata prandege balakato shoto prandeske liata Shadila barandega parusa ziekete prandakata balakatush Embrate balato shabrandege patuske dialata This is eternal life that they may know you the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent
let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let it cover all the earth that's our prayer that's our prayer let it cover all the earth let it cover all the earth don't be distracted in this atmosphere let it cover all let the weight of your glory let it cover all Let the weight of the glory Let the weight of your glory Let it cover Let it cover Holy Spirit, without your presence, there is no church. Without your presence, there is no preaching. There is no teaching. Without your presence, there is no transformation. We acknowledge your presence. The builder, the lifter, the changer, the transformer. You represent the presence of Jesus to us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please don't be distracted. If this is all we do tonight, it was worth your coming. Believe me. Yeshua. Call his name Yahushua, the Savior, the one who saves. Yeshua says. Yeshua May we never become too familiar with your presence We stand and we remain in awe Someone worship for one more minute We love you, we love you, we honor you, we love you, we are not them that use you, we love you, we honor you, it's our pleasure and our honor to serve your majesty. Thank you, Jesus, for in Jesus' name we worship, for in Jesus' name we worship. It is dangerous to worship in any other name.
for in Jesus name we worship Amen. God bless you please be seated good evening everybody it's a joy again to be in the presence of God the psalmist said I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the Lord I honor and I bless everyone Azaria family is connecting with us tonight and then our global family you're welcome God bless you in the name of Jesus I just want to honor a dear man of God such a pleasant surprise having him around Pastor Dele Oshumakinde God bless you all the way from the United Kingdom the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah praise the name of the Lord James chapter 1 and verse 25 Apostle James was charging the brethren and he says but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein not just to look into the perfect law but to continue therein he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work he says this man shall be blessed in his deed may i remind us again that church is not just a place for fun fair even though there is joy and rejoicing in the presence of god that every time we're gathered before the king of kings and the lord of lords it is a time for encounters moments of transformation and impartation we look into that perfect law of liberty and the bible says as we behold him as in a mirror we are changed hallelujah so every time you have an opportunity to be in the presence of the lord you must be very intentional and you must be very determined do not be careless with his presence Jacob in chapter 28 of Genesis said the Lord was in this place and I knew not the consequence for his lack of discernment will be over 20 years of hardship in the house of Laban and then in chapter 32 God would come to him again this time he was prepared he dismissed his wives his cattle when he was alone the Bible says a man came to him and he held him and said leave me for the day breaketh and Jacob said I will not let you go unless you bless me and he says what is your name he said Jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called Jacob but Israel for as a prince you have had power with God and you have prevailed he blessed him he touched the hollow of his thigh and the Bible says the sun arose and he called that place Peniel for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved we also learn from Jacob the necessary and sufficient condition for any ministry and any platform to be called the house of God even if you have the poster or the picture of the cross it does not qualify the place to be called the house of God there are two conditions according to Jacob's encounter in chapter 28 that qualifies any place to be called the house of God number one there was a ladder that connected that place right to the heavens hallelujah when Jacob woke up he said surely the Lord was in this place he says this is the gate of heaven there has to be a ladder a system that connects the earth to the heavens Number two, he says at the top of it was God himself and God began to speak, revealing himself. So there must be an encounter with heaven and we must hear the voice of God. If we cannot hear the voice of God in that platform, it is not the house of God. You cannot be in my house indefinitely and never hear my voice. Is it really true then that it is my house? But this is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, 
I've come here to challenge us tonight. It is my assignment under God to help us primarily have encounters with the Lord Jesus Christ and then to be empowered even as we serve his purposes within our lifetime. Tonight I'm teaching on the testimony of Enoch. The testimony of Enoch. This is a charge to draw our hearts towards deeper intimacy with God. Hallelujah. Let's begin our discussion tonight with Hebrews chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. The testimony of Enoch. One of the ways that we learn God and one of the ways that we grow in the kingdom. Please let me have your attention. One of the scripturally recommended pathways to spiritual growth is number one to press for direct encounters with God through his word and through the ministry of the Holy Spirit but number two to follow carefully and to learn from those who have gone ahead either historically or currently alive Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12 it says that ye be not slothful but followers of them so there are some them that are worth following who through faith and patience inherit the promises the bible says to not be slothful please help those under the anointing and it says to be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise that means one of the ways that we press towards the things of god one of the ways that we grow spiritually is to find models and references that have been able to through their lives capture rich dimensions of god to study them for instance if you want to study what it means to be blessed in the kingdom without losing your soul the recommended personality for study is abraham he says look unto abraham your father and to sarah that body he says for i called him alone and i blessed him and i increased him that means if your pattern of becoming prosperous is not in the order of abraham you will meet error and you will meet disaster somewhere there are many other parts of prosperity but the the scripturally defined pathway that defines a blessed man is that man abraham if you desire to encounter the God of heaven, encounters that transform, the recommended personality to follow and learn his doings with God is Jacob. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? Psalm 24. It says, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully, that he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and even righteousness from the God of his salvation. And then it says, this is the generation, verse 6, of them that seek him. It says that seek thy face. The original translation says, O God of Jacob. Because one of the gifts you get when you can trap a dimension of God in your life is God will name himself after you in honor to your press. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. At the end of your life, if you walk with God properly, it should be safe to say the God of this and that. Not as a ritual for human worship, but that trapped within that experience is an experience of God you are leaving behind for a generation. To learn God more. Until Abraham walked with God in a certain way, we did not know who the God of Abraham was. I hope you know that the operation of the God of Abraham is not the same as the operation of the God of Isaac. The same way you have seven spirits, seven operations but it's still the same spirit hallelujah if you are learning faith according to scripture you refer to many people abraham and then even in the new testament you come to apostle peter and you learn jesus himself spoke to him as touching the matters of faith 
Satan had desired to sift you like wheat, he says, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, now with this knowledge, strengthen your brethren. Are we learning? When you want to study one who is the epitome of favor in the scripture, you will have to go to the book of Esther and study the entire book of Esther. The book was captured in the name of a woman. That was the book where the woman never used a sword and yet she defeated everyone who was antichrist. Then you learn favor. You want to learn deliverance proper deliverance you have to study the exodus the life and the exodus of israel in egypt the entire journey even to the promised land is the most concise definition of the deliverance of a people the things that are written aforetime romans 15 4 romans 15 4 the things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they were written for our learning. Are we still together? That we through patience and comfort of scripture might have hope. That means it is not unscriptural to isolate biblical personalities and study them with a view to drawing from their lives and their stories dimensions of God that will aid our growth and our excelling in the kingdom and tonight we have decided to study the man Enoch Genesis chapter 5 gives us the first expression of this man Enoch there is a first Enoch that was the son of Cain this is not the one we are talking about Genesis chapter 5 the Bible tells us a few very important information about this man called Enoch. 5.18, 5 and verse 18. It tells us that Jared lived 160 and two years and he begat Enoch. So Enoch was a man who was born physically of earthly origin. His father being Jared. Now go to verse 21, please. Same Genesis chapter 5. The Bible says, And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years, and he begat Methuselah. So we see that Enoch was a human being in every way. He had a son, Methuselah. And for your Bible knowledge, you know that this was the oldest living man as recorded in Scripture. Hallelujah. You also study, when you study and count through the genealogies written in the Bible, you will find out that Enoch was the great-grandfather of Noah. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 14 gives us another very vital information. Hebrews chapter 11, did I get that right? Jude 1, is it Jude 1? Jude 1, 14, my apologies. Jude 1, 14. Jude 1, 14. Please look for it for me. The seventh man, it gives us an information. And Enoch also, thank you. Jude chapter 1 and verse 14. Jude and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam. Now, I don't mean to create any controversy here, but did you notice the Bible never said the seventh from creation? It said the seventh from Adam. Because even before Adam, there is an old story. Is that true? So the counting for our dispensation begins from Adam. Adam was the first man created in the image and the likeness of God created in the image and the likeness of God that you want to find out a lot of all these details you have to go to the book of Job and examine Job's contemplations in the face of his tragedy he began a discourse with God and in he began to communicate wisdom and he told us how that the earth was founded and that the sons of God sang for joy that was not an account that was captured in Genesis hallelujah 
the bible says in genesis chapter 1 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth he says now the earth was dark void formless and the face the spirit of god hovered around the face of the deep theologically speaking we call it the gap theory it's an attempt to explain the happenings that happened that occurred from the beginning of creation as we know as recorded in scripture this darkness and chaos is from the hebrew word tohu wa bohu confusion and chaos that something had happened we see that genesis 1 and 2 already contrast themselves because the character of god's creation is that if he creates it must be good now we see chaos that means that something else must have occurred here are we together and then in genesis chapter 1 and verse 3 so what you call the original creation theologically speaking was the recreation of earth not the first creation the recreation of earth so what you call eternity or what you call dispensations our dispensation is not the first recorded in scripture the earth is barely a little above or a little close to two three thousand years as we know from adam but scientists have been able to carbon date rocks and they have found archaeological sites that are tens of thousands of years is that true that is to tell you there is more there is more than we know but the bible says sufficient for us are the things that are already written for our learning that means you don't need to feel bad that you do not know certain things all that you need within your dispensation to learn god can be found within the volume of that which is written so that the blind search for things that are not written is unnecessary he says that whatever you are trying to find in the things that are not written they can be found by the spirit from the things that are already written are we learning scripture is sufficient in partnership with the holy spirit to help the believer learn god to the fullest as far as knowing god in this phase of life is concerned if you're with me say amen, amen. so back to enoch the bible tells us in jude 1 14 that enoch was the seventh man from adam and that he prophesied of certain things we're getting there a quick recap about enoch number one that he was the son of jared genesis 5 18 number two he was the father of methuselah genesis 5 21 he was also the great grandfather of noah when you count and he was the seventh man from creation hallelujah then the bible tells us that he lived for 365 years before he was taken by god he lived for 300 and 65 years now there are very three important uh, facts about Enoch that concern us in this brief discussion tonight as we pray three important facts about Enoch number one is found in Genesis chapter 5 22 and then 24 Genesis chapter 5 please the Bible says an Enoch walked with God and Enoch walked with God please keep 22 again and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters in spite of his normal life living his normal human life the Bible isolated that man to give us a very important information that he walked with God as though the rest did not walk with God why would the Bible isolate this man we see from Scripture Noah walked with God several other people walked with God but there was something about Enoch and his walk with God the Bible had to isolate that experience and to repeat it twice verse 24 Genesis 5 again the Bible says and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him now this is very powerful he walked with God verse 22 it's an information the Bible gives us while bearing children and living his human life he walked with God and then another dimension of press verse 24 that he walked with God to a point that he did not taste natural death he says for God took him 
it's important for us to know who took him because there are many things about enoch we need to study bible says better is the end of a thing than the beginning if the bible left us in the dark as to who took him we have a right to conclude that he backslided or something happened or he disappeared but the bible says god himself took him that means we are sure of the end of the man we can trust whatever is written about him for our learning is someone learning now enoch walked with god information number one number two the second information about Enoch is found in Jude 1 okay Hebrews 11 verse 5 I meant to say Hebrews 11 and verse 5 that's where we find the second information it says by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him watch this now for before his translation he had this testimony not that he lived long not that he was a prophet and he prophesied accurately not that he had many children and one of his sons became the longest living man there were many other things that were worthy testimonies but here paul is speaking to the the hebrews and he tells them that he had this testimony that he pleased god what a testimony the second fact about him is that he had a testimony that he pleased God. Number three is found in Judges chapter 1. Judges chapter 1. And we'll begin our reading from verse 14. We're reading down to 25. Not, I said Judges, Jude. My apologies, Jude 1, 14 to 25. Jude has only one chapter. Now watch this. The Bible says, and Enoch also... The seven from Adam prophesied. So that guy was not an ordinary man. He was not just a family man. He prophesied of this saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. We're reading to 25. Next verse. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him uh-huh these are murmurers complainers walking after their own lusts and their own mouth speaketh great swelling words having men's persons in admiration because of advantage Look at what this guy was prophesying. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of the Lord. We're reading to 25. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. 19. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. 22. It says, and of some have compassion, making a difference. 23. And others save with fear, pulling them out of fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Two more verses. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. 25, the last verse. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. So we see here that the reference was made to the prophecy of Enoch. That Enoch prophesied and he warned the people in his generation. Because we need to examine, the Bible says two very important things about him. That number one, he walked with God. And two, he had a testimony that he pleased God. And we see him prophesying and bringing a word of caution even to his generation about decadence and bringing them to righteousness to pursue the one true God. The testimony of Enoch. When people pass on to glory, 
in most grave sites and burial grounds when you pass a burial ground especially very organized burial grounds you have an opportunity to look usually they would have an epitaph that they write across those burial grounds they would write something that summarizes the life of the person who is in that grave something he did within his lifetime maybe he lived and blessed people maybe he was a great footballer maybe he was a professional boxer they write something there that just encourages you to know that this man right here that was a testimony was one of the most notable things that he did and the bible says as for enoch if you will ever remember enoch for anything beyond being the father of Methuselah, uh, of, of Methuselah, the son of Jared, he says you must have this testimony at the back of your mind. He walked with God and he pleased God. There are two questions that we are going to draw from this teaching tonight and that is my emphasis and then we'll pray two questions that we have to answer if we are able to answer these questions successfully then truly we would have understood and even captured into our own spiritual experience the testimony of Enoch please write this down question one what does it mean and what does it take to walk with God the first question we need to examine tonight question one what does it mean and what does it take to walk with God? Because the Bible says that Enoch walked with God. If you desire that kind of testimony within your lifetime and at the end of your life, then we must be able to study from Scripture. What does it mean and what does it take to walk with God? The answer to this question is found in a discussion that Jesus himself gave Matthew chapter 19 Matthew chapter 19 will begin our reading from verse 30 please patiently follow while I read it had to do this whole discussion began with children Matthew chapter 19 from verse 13 that is the last verse 13 Matthew 19 13 the Bible says and then were there brought unto him little children this is where the discussion began now with little children that he should put his hands on them and pray and the disciples rebuked them Jesus is busy leave these children away and then a rebuke comes immediately verse 14 we are reading to 30 media let's work together but Jesus said suffer little children and forbid them the word suffer means permit allow and forbid them not to come to me for there is a lesson you need to learn about their lives it says the kingdom for such for such that means there is a state that a little child has that until you attain that state you will not be able to walk in the experience of the kingdom he says that when you see little children coming to me instead of being busy doing protocol driving them away use them as a lesson to learn something about what it takes to have the experience of the kingdom verse 15 and he laid his hands on them and departed thanks 16 and behold one came and said unto him good master what good thing shall I do that I may inherit eternal life he comes to meet Jesus now 17 Jesus replies he said unto him why callest thou me good there is none good but one that is God but if thou will enter into life keep the commandments next verse he said unto him which Jesus said thou shalt do no murder thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not steal thou shalt not bear false witness 19 honor thy father and thy mother and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself verse 20 the young man said unto him all these i have kept from my youth what lack i yet now here is the test jesus said unto him if thou will be perfect you have tried oh 
but i see that you desire a deeper level here is the next condition go and sell thou that has that thou has and give it to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven after you have sold everything come and follow me don't follow me with those things you really want to follow me you really want to walk with me here is the condition go and sell everything that can steal my place in your life when you are empty of them when you are ready to be empty he says come and follow me watch what happened to the man he was a good man 23 verse 22 he says but when the young man had this saying he went away sorrowful why because he had many great possessions jesus observed him walking sorrowfully and he said verily verily i say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven and again i say unto you it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of god 25 when his disciples heard it they were exceedingly amazed and said who then can be saved if they were poor that statement would not have concerned them are we together there was something he said that affected they said no 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 hold on what is this that you just said who then can be saved but jesus beheld them and said with men this is impossible but with god all things are possible we're reading to 30 27 then answered peter and said unto him behold we have forsaken all now listen carefully remember what jesus told the man he said to follow me if you really want to walk with me there has to be a forsaking you are going to sell some things then it's not that you convert it liquidate it to cash and keep it there's a principle he was establishing there he says until you are empty of everything that represents your worth you cannot follow me now peter is saying okay what you are telling that man to do we have done it already behold we have forsaken all and followed thee what shall we have therefore 28 jesus said unto him verily verily i say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the son of man shall sit in the throne in his glory ye shall also sit upon 12 stones judging the 12 tribes of israel 29 and everyone that had forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother while i'm listing it be looking at it and tell me which one is not important let me repeat are you ready houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or land ah, to follow you about jesus you are the one who provided all of this and now you are listing what else is more important than these things houses brethren destiny help us inclusive sisters father mother wife children lands what else is left he says for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life and enoch walked with god hmm. what does it take and what does it mean to walk with god write this down to walk with god means that he becomes the absolute priority of your life and of your destiny to walk with god means that he becomes the absolute priority of your life and your destiny To love, to, to walk with God means that he becomes the absolute priority of your life and your destiny. The Bible says to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. Number two, to walk with God means to love him and to walk in 
total surrender. To walk with God means to love him and to walk in total surrender. Matthew chapter 22, please. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 35. Jesus is teaching us to, to walk with God means to love him and to walk in total surrender. Matthew 25 from verse 30, 22 from verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, uh-huh, next verse. Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Is that in your Bible? With all thy soul and with all thy mind expressions that mean with your everything next verse it says this is the first and great commandment then 39 we're reading to 40 39 and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself 40 it says on these two commandments that means all of those laws that were given were only to achieve this to bring you to a point where in experience can you imagine that every law that was given to the nation of israel whether the ten commandments or the laws that came that governed their lives these were all natural ways of constraining them to a point where in experience they would love the lord with all their hearts all their souls all their strength on these two commandments that means you only qualify to push away all of them if you are ready to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Mark chapter 3 from verse 13. We're reading to 15. Mark chapter 3. Is someone learning already? The Bible says, And he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him, whom he would and they came unto him this is jesus calling men to walk with him the bible says listen please especially if you are a servant of the lord jesus serving in ministry here the bible says he ordained 12 that they should be with him first and then he might send them forth to preach 15. he says and to have power to heal sickness where does the power come from from the walking with him and to cast out devils he called them that they should walk with him first. You may have heard me say it again and again, that when God, call, when God calls you, he says, follow me, not follow it. When you come to God and you are following it, it can mean anything. Prosperity, ministry, fame, business, any other thing that represents the basis of your seeking God outside of him is idolatry. Are we together? Do you know you can love heaven more than God? It is still idolatry. It is not heaven we worship. It is him that sits on the throne. Are we together? What makes heaven heaven is not the place. What makes heaven heaven is the presence of Jesus. You have to understand this. You want to walk with God? You must love him sincerely. This scripture is very powerful. You must love him more than ministry, love him more than activities. Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. He called them and asked them to walk with him first. Now let's go to Acts 4 and 13 and see what happened there. This was after healing the man at gates beautiful now when they saw the boldness of peter and john and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with jesus not that they were powerful anointed men of god not that they were great giants and champions they had been with jesus And Enoch walked with God meant that do you know if the Bible never told us anything about his family life his ministry and others 
we may assume that he only walked with God because there was nothing else that mattered in his life. So the Bible takes out time to tell us that he had a grandfather, he had a father, he had a wife, he had children, he had a life, he even had a ministry, yet none of them came close to him. His testimony was not connected to any one of these. And Enoch walked with God in spite of his genealogy, in spite of his ability to have prophesied accurately, he walked with God. You desire the testimony of Enoch, you must desire to walk with God. To walk with God does not mean to neglect anything and everything he has given you, but that you exalt him to a point and a position where with respect to him and compared to him, absolutely nothing absolutely nothing can take his place we live in a world today and this has been my call for many years and it remains my call to the body of Christ listen to my message what seekest thou we need to return back to a place where we stop using God and using religiosity and spirituality just to get things God is calling us to a deeper relationship that is greater than breakthrough, that is greater than money, that is greater than impartation. God is calling us to himself, not to it. He's calling us deeper, 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 deeper. He's calling us deeper. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Go and sell everything that came through your intellect, through your providing value. Can I tell you, Jesus did not mean he should literally go and sell them. When you sell something, you relinquish ownership. When you sell something, you have parted with it. He's saying, there is, when I look at you, I see that you desire me. But the reason why you have not been able to attain unto perfection is that there are many other things standing side by side with me. Every time I talk to believers, don't tell me you love the Lord. To what extent? Love has levels. We know that. Biology teaches us that. Psychology teaches us that. Love is not generic. There are four indices according to scripture that we use to measure love. Number one is passion. Number two is pleasure. Number three is commitment. Number four is sacrifice. Your love is not complete until these four components are captured in it. In genuine love, there must be passion. In genuine love, there must be commitment. In genuine love, there must be pleasure. And in genuine love, there must be sacrifice. The highest biblical index for measuring love is sacrifice. So when you say, Lord, I love you, he says, show me what you have laid down for me as proof that you love me. Hallelujah. Show me what you have laid down, the testimony of Enoch. When the Bible tells you Enoch walked with God, it means that he exalted God above his wife, above his children, above his prophetic ministry, above everything that represented relevance for him. This was what he was telling the rich man. He says, listen, you want to follow me? Prove to me that you love me and that I mean more to you than all of these things. And Peter now said, we have left everything. Jesus, I was a fisherman. You saw that I left everything to follow you. And he says, don't feel bad. Because can I tell you, when you truly leave everything, you will feel like a fool. If you have not felt like a fool and felt at a loss in following God, you are not yet there. Sacrifice is costly. We have left all to follow you. We have left all. Now we do not have any definition for our lives outside of you. We are just following you and you've not told us anything. I am an adult. I'm a married man with children, Peter must be saying. What is this one that we are following you every day? Where are we going to? 
and he says i am more important to you than the assignment how many people love the assignment more than jesus how many people love conferences and conventions more than jesus we men of god how many of us love pulpit preaching ministry healing anointing power we will give up jesus a thousand times to get power and enoch walked with god i hope you know that you can walk for god and not walk with god there are men there was a parable of the man who was calling people into the vineyard to walk the basis of their going for many of them was negotiation they negotiated for a denary so they did not go to the vineyard because they loved him they went to the vineyard because they had a contract there are many contract christians lord i love you but i'm giving you two months i will be a worker but after two months if my breakthrough does not come whatever you see take it like that what does it mean and what does it take to walk with god walking with god demands total surrender write it down total surrender we've dealt with the teachings on the will of god you can get that total surrender father if it is possible take this cup off me he said but nevertheless not my will but yours be done listen until we get to points in our lives where the will of god and his desire becomes bigger than our ambitions and the things that we want and the things that drive our lives there are levels of intimacy we can never get into i submit to you that when you begin to walk with god the first thing he does is to bring you through his word and his spirit to a place and a point in your Christian experience where he begins to dethrone every idol, even if that idol represents something good. It does not have to be evil. Once it is not God, it must go down. Two kings cannot sit on the same throne. Jesus and your intellect. Jesus and your gifts. Jesus and your connections. Jesus and your anointing. Jesus and your preaching prowess, Jesus and your ambition, Jesus and your family. He does not teach to be responsible or to be irresponsible. But he's telling you that compared to Jesus, he must stand in a place and a class all by himself. The Bible says in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah chapter 6, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. You can't see him until something dies in the year that king uzziah died i now saw the real king sitting on a throne in the year that my pride died i saw the lord in the year that my loss died i saw the lord in the year that my ambition my obsession to be great and famous as compared to revealing and glorifying jesus died i saw the lord if you ever covet the testimony of Enoch in your life, the question you have to answer is, do I love the Lord? And there are clear indices. If and when you love the Lord, the Bible does not leave you in the dark. There are proofs that you love the Lord. John 14, 21. John 14, 21, then we'll jump to 23. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our abode with him. First John chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17. First John chapter 2 from verse 15 love not the world aha uh -huh. neither the things that are in the world the word love there comes from the word eros eros an ungodly affinity 
a passion and a drive for the things of this world that becomes higher than your pursuit of God. To love not the world does not mean you will not have the blessings. He made all things richly even for us to enjoy. But he says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, whether you are a preacher, whether you are a politician, whether you are a businessman, it doesn't matter who you are. He says the love of the Father is not in him. Then the next verse, he categorizes everything that is in the world into three main categories. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not in the Father. It's not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17. And the world passeth away, and the lost thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Lord, I love you. I love you. He said, mm -mm. Love is not an empty word. I will have to see. For God so loved the world. He would have said, Lord, world, I love you while we are suffering. But when he loved the world, he gave. And what he gave was his only. Can you give your only, not your many? When you get to a point where you can give your only, you love God. Your only. Hmm. What does it mean? And what does it take to walk with God? Total surrender. Total surrender. When he says, go left, left becomes where you go. Go right, right becomes where you go. Whether it is comfortable or uncomfortable, because where he leads you, you are willing to go. Listen, if you do not grow to this level, you will never attain unto maturity in the spirit. There is such an obsession for a Christianity of convenience. Listen, and you know, I would, I would always teach you the balance, the whole counsel of God. Please hear me. No matter what else you learn, if your love for God does not supersede the obsession for pleasure and the obsession for convenience, you cannot be mighty with God. We live in a world where our obsession for convenience is greater than our love and our pursuit for God. When a woman goes to the labor room, you can see the woman crying. In fact, not even the labor room, the entire process of the pregnancy. It is within her power to get tired one day and say, listen, I've made my contribution to this baby, I am tired but it's because she loves the baby more than her condition. Am I right on that? Men are saying yes. How in the world? Are we together? Have you seen what pregnancy does to an average woman? It will change everything about her. Oh, I want to eat food that has smoke smelling. I want to take this and then they bring it and the person says, I've, I've changed. I, I want something else. But in all of that, what she's carrying as painful as it is, is worth the process. Most believers complain because your love for Jesus is not strong enough to sponsor and provide the staying power, whether through storms, through rain, through whatever it is. Let me be fair to the man. When the man now goes to, you know, struggle out in life and bring something back home, even if he returns back with scars, he's happy that his family can feed. And just seeing the joy that he's able to meet the needs of those he loves will be more than every embarrassment and every suffering that he went through. Can I tell you? Every time Jesus becomes a luggage and a load, check what else has taken his place every time the pursuit of the faith life becomes an inconvenience coming to the house of god loving jesus prayer fasting the word of god corporate fellowship the moment it becomes a burden i want you to check something is wrong 
because every time you know the absence of passion by the emergence of excuses the absence of passion is characterized by the sudden emergence of excuses the moment there is no passion and there is no drive you will have excuses i am busy you will have excuses don't forget what i'm telling you you can test the absence of passion by the sudden emergence of excuses i'm busy i just got a promotion and i need to hurry up so you can pray you can fast you can study the word of god you can spend time with him something is wrong with your love life is someone learning the bible took out time to tell us the family life and other involvements of enoch so that there is no excuse the bible never records that he was an irresponsible father the bible never records that he was an irresponsible husband the bible never says he was a fake prophet you know a bit about prophecy and you know it takes a lot with god to command that level of accuracy to speak about the coming of christ when the dispensation was just beginning what level of depth and heights did he touch and yet in spite of the earthly responsibilities the bible says enoch still walked with god that means your job is not an excuse is someone hearing now that means your marriage is not an excuse that means the presence of the children is not an excuse the ministry enlargement is not an excuse kill those excuses tonight and say lord i return back to the place of the altar all of the excuses i have given flimsy excuses they may look justifiable but enoch cancels all our excuses if you use family life as an excuse enoch was a family man if you use ministry as an excuse enoch was a mighty prophet if you use old age as an excuse enoch was a very old man and yet he walked with god if you say it's because i'm giving my children all the time that's why i cannot walk with god what greater heritage to birth children and then one son who was the longest living man on earth enoch someone say no excuses prophesy to yourself say no excuses hmm. you will always have time for what you love as much as people say they are busy if you hear right now that they are sharing one one million somewhere in guagualada this night and by six o'clock it will stop energy and fire and passion and determination and zest oh bold bold stops work by 12 midnight stories you will find a way of calling a destiny helper call it even if the person says i'm charging you hundred thousand you say no problem let's go i will give you if i go back with nine hundred thousand is still profit for where your treasure is where your treasure is beloved people don't just laugh where your treasure is that is where your heart will be where your treasure is if your if your treasure is your job your heart will be there if your treasure is ministry i will keep saying it for as long as i live that there is nothing there is no one there is no activity upon this earth that sustains the ability to take his place in my life i will close this ministry a thousand times and beg you with tears in my eyes and say i didn't do it because i hate you it's because i love him abraham take now thy son thine only son whom thou lovest and offer him upon a mount that i will show you the bible says abraham arose early in the morning and carried isaac to go and kill him is he would have given one of the servants and said just go and kill him for me i would tell god he's dead but to kill him by yourself my call tonight from the life of enoch is for everyone under the sound of my voice and those who are watching 
to return back to the place of intimacy with the Lord. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. And Enoch walked with God. And Joshua Selman walked with God. And this businessman walked with God. And this preacher and this father. Listen to me. There are many men today who were very spiritual before they got married and had children. When they see spiritual people or see spiritual platforms, they run away because it reminds them of their yesterday. There are people who probably years ago on campus were on fire and they loved the Lord. And they decided to use growth and age to graduate out of the school of the spirit. There are many people who love God because they had responsibilities in church. You are a deacon, you are a pastor, so you must be there for the morning prayer. The moment you take away those titles, it also goes with the fire. How many homes today do not pray? How many homes today do not fast? How many homes today there is no system of spiritual growth? The man is up and doing looking for money. The woman is up and doing carrying stories from place to place. Everybody is going from pillar to post. The children are becoming like Lucifer within the house. Please hear me. Walking with God is greater than walking with the government. Walking with God is greater than walking with Shell and NMPC. Walking with God is greater than walking with any institution on earth. May God grant you grace to work with all those desired institutions. But in addition, you must get to a point where you... Walking with God is greater than walking in a ministry. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.